If you've been paying attention to Ellen DeGeneres related news recently, then you'll see that there's been a lot of things going on with her. Mainly, her show has been put through the ringer due to various accusations made by celebrities and former staffers, as well as people who interacted with her on various levels, that said that Ellen wasn't like how she appeared on TV, not even close. So much so that allegations of her desiring some to not look at her started to pop up from multiple sources. Now, via video call with staff, Ellen has spoken out about that. Allow us to break it down for you. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The response to all of these allegations came via a video call with 200 members of the staff. Do you want to win a brand new iPhone or a brand new MacBook Pro? Maybe you'd prefer a $500 Amazon gift card. Well, comment the hidden message in this video for a chance to enter to win. One that was made because of an internal investigation held by owner Warner Media to see if many of these complaints made against both Ellen and her executive producers were true. Ellen also responded to many allegations that were made against her, according to sources, including the no look and can't be in the same room with her ones that various people connected to the show and not made. She succinctly said that these were crazy and not true. She did however call herself an introvert and someone who requires her own space, which will break down in a bit. Also in that call, she made a heartfelt and emotional apology to her staff who were there and noted the following. I care about each and every one of you, DeGeneres reportedly said. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I feel like I've kind of let the ball drop a bit because I'm focused on the show. I go in and I do the show, and I've just let everybody do their jobs to run different departments, and it just became a well-oiled machine, and I think that is the problem. It's not a machine, this is people. These are human beings that are working hard every single day to put this together. This show would not be what it is without all of you. There's a lot to unpack there for sure, but let's get to the allegations made against her first. Is it as crazy as Ellen says it is? Ellen noted point blank in that video call that the claims made against her were quite frankly crazy. That it's not true that she wouldn't have people look at her or various other things. But here's the thing, if it was so crazy and not true, why did so many people make that claim? Think about it like this, if you were going to insult someone or complain about something someone did, you could go and make an elaborate lie and potentially get caught when it was revealed not to be true. Or you could go and talk about something you know to be true and see if others noticed it as well. Given the nature of the complaints and the number of complaints made about Ellen, which do you think is the more likely here? And while many have cited the BuzzFeed article as proof one way or the other about what is going on with Ellen, there have been many other complaints made against Ellen in this vein after that expose, and they said the exact same thing. 4. Australia and the Camera Worker there are two very interesting stories that came out about Ellen DeGeneres that helped cement the notion that she doesn't like people looking at her and such. The first one came from a producer of the Australian Today Show. He noted that when Ellen and her team came down under in order to do an interview on the show for something she was doing, they were anything but kind. Mainly, Ellen's team instructed the producer and the staff on every move that Ellen was going to make on the show, including telling them who would be able to talk with Ellen and who would be able to look at her. Yes, the producer specifically mentioned that part and even noted how mind-boggling it was because that's just dumb. Also, apparently the producer had to chastise her team on set because they were laughing too much at her jokes, which basically made them train dogs that would react to whatever their master did. But wait, there's more. There was an anonymous camera operator who came out very recently to add their own thoughts on things that went on with Ellen's show, including noting that it was a badge of honor to make it through a year or so because of how crazy things were on set. What's more, when Ellen entered a room, everyone else apparently had to leave it, to the extent that Ellen had her bodyguards with her, and so when they entered the room, it was a signal to get out or else. So given that, and given that there were multiple people across staff and other outlets that said this happened, can we really say that Ellen isn't doing this? Again, it would be a lot harder to make up an elaborate lie that can be disproven than it is to just talk about something you know to be true. Then there's the I'm an introvert line. 3. A true introvert. Now let's talk about something else that Ellen said during her second apology to her staff, saying that she was an introvert 
and that she sometimes needs her space. If you're curious, the definition for an introvert is a shy, reticent person. Does that sound like Ellen DeGeneres to you? And no, we're not just talking about how she acts on her show, because as many have noted, there's a mask that she wears in order to appeal to audiences. But rather, we're talking about the other ways she's acted both on TV and in various other places. Still don't get what we mean? Think about it. If she's an introvert, a true introvert, how is she doing all of these things? How and why is she putting herself on TV day in and day out? Why is she doing so many shows like her talk show and game of games and so on and so forth? You'd think that this would terrify her if she's shy. And yet, when she hosts the Oscars, she went and did the now famous slash infamous selfie with the crowd to help sell the moment. So, would an introvert do that? Or about her comedy career? Don't forget that Ellen started out her life as a comedy and even did a Netflix special a while back because she really missed being on the comedy circuit. But that's not something you do if you're an introvert. You wouldn't go and put yourself in front of people like that and try to make them laugh because sometimes that won't work. Now some of you might say, well she clearly has worked over some of her shy problems and learned to be comfortable in front of people. But is that true though? She did an interview with a popular magazine before she was about to go air her Netflix special, and she revealed her true personality to the interviewer, and shy was not a word he used at all. In fact, he noted that she was more shrewd than you might expect from her, to the point where she was cracking jokes at poor people, such as in one case where she noted that she didn't know how far seats go in a plane because she's never out of first class. A shy person wouldn't make that joke. Now, as for the other aspect, the needing my space, that's something everyone can appreciate. Not the least of which is because whether you're a celebrity or a common person, we all just need to get away from it all. That's fair. But there's a difference between needing some space and literally taking over a space because you're in it, which is what people were accusing her of. And this doesn't help the don't look at us stigma that many have put on her. Because while a shy person technically wouldn't want certain people looking at them, there's a difference between that in certain settings like a crowd and such and being interviewed on a show, which begs the question. So why give that excuse? That is a good question, and it honestly might play into what's really going on with Ellen and her show right now. What do we mean by that? Quite simply, it's been somewhat apparent that Warner Media, the true heads of Ellen's show, want to make sure that the show remains on the air, to the extent that when they conducted their internal investigation, they only interviewed 100 people, which does seem like a lot, but considering the complaints go back years, and there's definitely been more people on Ellen's show past and present that add up to more than 100, that's not a lot at all. So, what does this all mean? More than likely, it means that WB really wants to keep Ellen on the air, primarily for money reasons, and that they want her to explain away her faults that have been brought up via these complaints, some of which came as a bit condescending if you really look at her apologies. For example, in the apology that we talked about earlier, Ellen said, I feel like I've kind of let the ball drop a bit, which is a very light way of admitting fault. You didn't drop the ball a bit, Ellen, you dropped the whole dang ball. Because even if you weren't guilty of some of the things people accused you of, which, given the numerous people speaking about her, that's unlikely, you're still in charge and these people, including the executive producers that were fired, follow your lead and example. Which is why bad things happened in part because the EPs were given free reign, basically, and that led to very bad behavior. Her apologies and the subsequent firings of the EPs and hiring of new ones covers up that problem, but it doesn't stop the other problems that are very prevalent. So for her to use the I'm shy excuse might just be her very basic way of going and trying to cover up what she's done, which would make WB happy for various reasons. Why the cover up? As we've seen in Hollywood over the last several years, Many people have come forward to talk about how they have been abused, misused, and discriminated against in the industry. Some of the things that have come out is quite disgusting, and thankfully, those people have been taken care of via firings, blackballing, and more. But with Ellen, it's a bit of a trickier case, because her biggest complaint per se is that she doesn't treat her work as well, but she doesn't physically abuse them or call them very hurtful things. She just doesn't treat them well, versus what the producers did, which was sad, vile, and an insult to modern culture. So for WB, they're likely thinking that since Ellen's complaints are more personality-focused, they can 
couldn't get away with shuffling the deck and just moving forward, which they're openly planning to do. But why? Why such a cover-up? Simple. Money. Ellen Show and her brand is a serious moneymaker, no joke. She's worth well over $400 million, and the advertising revenue on her show alone makes WB oodles of cash. So, to lose that and try to replace it with something else, yeah, that'll cost them. So, their best option is to try and lower the blow from these complaints and keep Ellen going with certain changes that no one can argue aren't good, like training to make sure discrimination isn't a thing, while also not listening to those who want Ellen cancelled. Ethical? Not so much. Profitable? You bet. So, until someone comes up with video evidence that shows Ellen doing these things, what we've gotten now is as good as it's gonna get. So, there you have it. A look at the response from Ellen about certain allegations and how it all might tie into her show staying on the air. What do you think of all that's going on? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.